first up is a film called ISS, and you might be asking yourself, why have I not heard anything about this film? And there is probably a decent reason for that. I actually don't dislike the core concept of it. It's the idea that, you know, a U.S. and a Russian crew are up on the International Space Station and then a war breaks out or, a, you know, conflict happens on Earth and they're both told by their respective governments to take over this key asset by any means necessary. Now, does this idea feel like it probably would have played better in like the early 90s, late 80s? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's also strange because I think this filmed in 2021 and so... You know, the U.S.-Russian conflict is obviously like, one, there's so much historical context for that, but two, fresher than it should be, but it, this movie doesn't acknowledge it. And so it's like, it's dancing around these adversaries. For the Americans, you have Ariana DeBose, John Gallagher Jr., and Chris Messina. And for the Russians, you have Maria Mashkova, Pilo Azbike, whose name I'm pretty sure I just butchered. I'm so sorry. You will recognize him from Game of Thrones. And then Costa Ronin. And, you know, I think this film strangely does itself the most disservice by trying to feel like it was authentically on the ISS. I actually, you know, to its credit, inspired me to do a lot of research on the ISS because I was like, it seems odd to me that only these two countries would have people on the station at the same time. But turns out, really small station and they are typically the predominant countries who are up there there are other folks but I was like in 2020 whatever you know wouldn't there be like Asians up there question mark but I stood corrected however if the most interesting thing about the movie is the Wikipedia research you do after like eh, it's not a great sign also I know they're trying because I know they're trying to do like the zero gravity stuff and getting used to it and look how cool this is but the the practical effects of them in clearly like giant harnesses and they're all in huge pants that are trying to hide the harnesses and then, you know, like certain things aren't floating that should be even though they're in this like zero, you know, it's it's trying really hard in some parts but just like couldn't afford to try in other parts. So you get this like dissonant sense of, yeah, they're sort of in space but it feels a little cheap. Also, the script, the dialogue, etc. It's... It's not trusting of the audience. A lot of it is delivered over like intercoms and weird messages on screens and like whispers and stuff like that. And I think all the actors are trying with what they are given, but what they are given is not, it's not a level. And the movie is only an hour and 35 minutes. And I kept going, how is there so much of this left? I was hoping at a certain point it would just become so campy that it was fun, but it never quite got there and it was never serious or tense enough that it you know made me feel like super invested I will actually say the music and the sound effects uh, were really good that that I will give credit to because they did do a good job of the tension but you know it's almost undermined by the amount of exposition and you know like the character development we just get these random one-off statements about these characters that were you know was meant to care about them because they keep repeating it over and over like one person's like my two kids back home did I mention I have two kids back home ah, I have two kids back home gee I wonder if that's going to come into play later Sh spoiler but not it, it does it's kind of a shame I think we've seen movies like this done but done better I run it like the space station stuff looks kind of cool but like I said the zero g stuff does not feel great the acting is meh, you know actually Chris Messina does a pretty good job and I was like he probably did like four days on set and you know good for him but yeah I overall found myself pretty disappointed by it I actually didn't go in with high expectations but I just I don't know who I would say to watch this movie I could see this being like a fine background watch you know when it comes out on streaming probably at some point but I don't feel the urge to tell people to run out to the theaters to see it. And I'm sorry to say that because I know it's hard to get a movie done. I get the sense this like went through some troubles with like release dates and all this stuff and it just kept getting pushed. But yeah, overall, I'm going to give it a 2.4 out of 5. The next film I have is called Origin and it is from writer-director Ava DuVernay. And it is based on the journey the author Isabel Wilkerson went on to write her book, Cast the Origins of Our Discontents. And it's it's a tough one. So the idea behind cast the origins of our discontent is that it is an exploration of racism in the U.S. and like as an aspect of the caste system and that castes are actually worse than racism because it's often people of the same race perpetuating horribleness upon each other. So it's, it's a larger encompassing issue. It has Anjanae Ellis-Taylor as Isabel Wilkerson, John Bernthal as her husband, Nisi Nash Betts as her cousin, Emily Yancey as her mother. And then it does this interesting thing where it 
you know, sort of fictionalizes the stories that the author is exploring within it. So there's a lot of layers to this film. Uh, so you've also got like Finn Whitrock as August Landmesser and Jasmine Cephas Jones as Elizabeth Davis. And some of these are real, real people. Like you've got Miles Frost as Trayvon Martin, which was absolutely heartbreaking to see on screen. I think the challenge of this film is that it is a bummer. It is a brilliantly made bummer, but it is... It's hard to watch because it is confronting you with just loads of sadness. And I, you know, was not in the best emotional place when I watched it. And it was just really hard to take on, you know, institutionalized oppression. And, and then also this character slash, you know, the actual author was going through all these personal tragedies at the time. And it's just like, it's a lot of sad. And I think the thing that I encourage people to go see Origin, just know you need to have you know, the emotional capacity to see it. I think what frustrates me is that the people who need to see this movie or particularly the people who need to read cast the origins of our discontents are not the people who are going to bother to see it. And that frustrates me because it's it's a very educational piece as well, which it's always tough to be like, hey, do you want to learn something? Go to the movies right now. You know, like I said, it's just it's a tough one. People have been talking about it for a while. You know, it, it kind of technically came out last year, but it's getting its wide release now. I encourage you to see it. I just, I warn you that you need to be prepared for it. I encourage you to spread the word about it because the performances in it as well are heartbreaking. I think the one thing that I maybe would give notes on is the way that it sort of pings around and, and weaves together the stories that are like the research within the story and then her own personal tragedies and like all this other stuff can I, I would have maybe considered reordering them but at the same time like it is a a gut punch of a movie in a in a complimentary way. So if you have the ability to see it, I would recommend seeing Origin. I am going to give it a four out of five. 